Hi everyone and welcome back to another video here on the Bravic Productions YouTube channel where in this video I'm going to be taking you on another behind the scenes tour as I'm going to be showing you how I actually edit thumbnails in Photoshop. However on the last edit that I did unfortunately the screen capture could not capture the um, drop down uh, menu so what I thought I'd do is this time uh, just talk about it in screenshots so instead of recording the whole thing and then just showing the um, Un, unmissed um, or missed out um, drop down menus. I thought, you know, let's just talk about it in screenshots and, you know, take it from there. So, in this video, I'm actually going to be showing you Photoshop. Now, Photoshop is a very easy software to use. Um, it's literally similar to Premiere Pro, but this time, instead of uh, making videos, you're actually making photographs and images and posters and whatever, whatever other. Um, media you're creating whether it's a leaflet or anything else like that but yeah we're actually going to be um, going straight onto Photoshop and tell you how it works and how I actually like to create my YouTube thumbnails. Now the first thing I do that I actually do when I go into Photoshop is I actually want to uh, click on create new which is the um, first option on the left hand side which is actually above open and it will take me to a tab that has these um, presets or whatever you've been using so you can actually see it's actually been selected on the default Photoshop size of the canvas so the canvas is actually the um, paper and the workspace you're working with so you can actually see it's actually selected the default Photoshop size uh, 16 by 12 and the resolution is a bit lower than expected and it's in orientation but what I like to do is to actually select, uh, do a custom, so uh, make it by 1920 by 1080 because nowadays this is what all uh, computer screens are nowadays and you know whether you're creating a YouTube thumbnail you know you want to use it at that resolution so you can see it better uh, when it comes down to creating it in the actual workspace. Now the next thing, when it comes down to making a YouTube thumbnail, so for example I've actually got a little um, example that I've actually got here uh, for one of my series I'm actually doing on Bradford Productions, which of course is called Theme Park Creations, and you can actually see here I've actually got a screenshot that I actually took, and what I'm then going to do is I'm then going to then open it up in Photoshop, so I click on open, and then I select the area where I've actually saved the screenshot to, and then I click on open and then ev and then it opens up in Photoshop. Now when it opens up in Photoshop you might notice that it actually opens in a, a different tab. So what I actually want to do is to actually move it um, from, the, um, from the new tab it's created onto the original one that I actually created where the workspace is. Now before I actually do move the um, the photo itself, what I, what I actually want to do is to actually make sure that it's been cropped. So I actually click on the crop tool and then when it comes up it will have these um, little um, points uh, that, are, that are on the corners, the middle, yeah, top, middle and bottom uh, corners so you can literally just uh, make it how big you want it to be before you then um, click and drag it onto the actual workspace. Now the next thing you want to do is when you actually um, put it on the um, original tab that you've created um, you might notice that when you've actually recropped it it will sometimes go a little bit smaller and you actually see a little bit of white uh, gap available and what I actually like to do is to actually use the free transform so I can actually uh, click on to edit and then click on the free transform which will allow me to um, stretch the image out and rotate it and get it how I want it, how I want it to be, you know, just to make sure that you know it fits perfectly. It covers the whole um, white background that is on the layer. And then once I've actually um, uh, finished with that um, background layer, you know, I literally just delete it because you don't need it because you've actually got the um, screenshot that you've took, and then it literally just moves on to um, added in text, I suppose. And once I've actually added in my um, screenshot or for the thumbnail, I then make sure that um, white background layer is deleted and then 
and then go into the options and, and click on the little padlock to make sure um, that image is locked uh, to make sure that when it comes down to um, moving the text or anything else like that I make sure it's actually on the lock so when it comes down to moving uh, so that the actual picture doesn't move because otherwise um, it would be a little bit tricky sorting things out so make sure that the um, uh, little padlock is selected to make sure that nothing doesn't go wrong and then of course when it comes down to type in text uh, just click on the little um, T that is on the toolbar on the left hand side and then just type in anything you want so for this instance I'm actually typing in the name of my theme park which is which of course is called Fairy Tale Kingdom however you might notice that it's actually a little bit um, boring because you actually see here it's literally just all in white there's literally nothing and all I like to do is actually put a stroke outline on the back of the um, of the text so you can actually see that the word the words actually look look a bit more clearer and with, with a nice blue um, stroke you know just to make it a bit colourful um, you know for the actual thumbnail itself now one of the final things to do is to save it as an appropriate file so what I actually like to do with my um, YouTube thumbnails is I actually like to save them as a, J a JPEG because uh, that's actually the smallest size and that it's literally the appropriate size that can be accepted uh, when you can when you actually add in your YouTube thumbnail when it comes down to creating those uh, videos. But if you use the PNG, uh, it means that the file was going to be too big, and that means uh, you have to go back and change it to a smaller file. So what I'm actually going to do is click on Save As, um, and then you have another tab that comes up uh, with Cloud Document or on your computer. I'll literally just go to save on your computer and then what happens next is that I then go to the area that I want it to be saved give it an appropriate name and then just go and save it as a JPEG because it's literally uh, the easiest file size to save it as because because of the um, because of the file size and when you actually upload them to YouTube so you know just make sure it's actually saved as a JPEG and once that's been completed uh, it should then appear in the area you saved it and then you should be able to open it up and then upload it to your YouTube video that you're creating so yeah that is really it then for this um, rather different um, behind the scenes tool videos because I actually want to do it in screenshots this time you know just to um, show you what everything looks like in that but yeah, um, that really is it. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Like I said, I'm sorry if it wasn't done on the screen capture because you know you can't really see the drop down menus or anything else like that. But yeah, that is really about it for this video. Thank you very much for watching Bradfit Productions. And remember, keep on filming and keep on editing. See you all in the next video.